pointer. Jacob? All right, thank you. Um, so I'm going to talk about a, a instrumentation that we built for doing 3D or multi-view imaging. Um, I'd also like to just point out Victoria Tran, who is my co-author on this talk. She produced a lot of the material and images and does a lot of our 3D scanning at the Peabody. All right, so just to give a little background, this project dates back many, many years, going back to 2010, when I was at Tulane University working with Hank Bart. We, we had a project where we were trying to do 3D scanning of fishes using a laser scanner. That was fraught with all kinds of problems, lots of limitations in scanning fluid preserved fishes with lasers. And so we started to look at alternative techniques. We came up with um, photogrammetry. But one of the problems was is scaling it and being able to do it in a highly repetitive nature. And so that led us to develop this prototype instrument that you can see on, on the bottom left of your screen. And it's basically just a bunch of cameras that move around and take a bunch of pictures that we can then use for doing 3D scanning. But that was just proof of concept type stuff. We never actually went to the next stage of getting a real full-blown project to do large-scale scanning. So fast forward to 2019 um, at the Peabody, we got a project from the National Endowment of Humanities to further improve upon this infrastructure and actually do a production level scanning project. And so we scanned a number of materials from the Yale Peabody Babylonian collection and the anthropology collection. Um, and then finally, now what we're working on now is using the same instrumentation to be able to do the same kind of concept, grabbing multiple views of images, but we're working with one of the more challenging uh, critters to be doing this with insects. And so we're using this very big device to image lots of little tiny insects. We're trying to see if we can reconstruct 3D data or at least identify what this is applicable for, for doing 3D scanning. But also we're doing it to do these really rapid data sets where we just extract the label data from these multi-view image sets. And there we might grab only a dozen or so images per, per specimen. Um, so the project's been going on for many, many years. I've got a long slew of collaborators that have contributed. One thing I like to point out are the, all the names in, in yellow and in blue. Those are the number of students that have worked on this project. A lot of this work has been done by students. In fact, some of the software development has even been led by students early on in the project. Um, so here's just a sped up view of what the current instrumentation looks like. There's normally two chambers that would be stacked on top of each other, so you could do full 360 in one, one go. But this is the setup that we're currently using at the Peabody, where we're using it on a big table, and it can go around. And, and you can see on the other side there the, the specimen rotating around that was actually scanned as a result of this. Let that finish playing so you can see what it's doing. The cameras do this little 360 spin. That was an, This is a very old version. The, the current hardware actually doesn't do that anymore. It's, it's much more optimized and can now do a lot of rotations without having to worry about wires tangling and things. Um, but those were little things it was doing to, to prevent uh, wiring issues. On to the next slide. So here are some actual scans of some biological material. Um, a number of insects we scanned with the lightning bug project, um, small fossilized gastropod um, that was on loan to, to one of my colleagues that's working on that specimen right now. Um, and, you know, with the insects, you can see there's pins in them. All of our scans, we usually do them with the pins and the labels. Our goal is not necessarily to, to just do 3D. We want to be able to do 3D at scale. And so the idea of taking off pins and all that's too much work. And so if we have to program the cameras to take more photos so that they can get the right angles and get in there and, and reconstruct it, that's what we try to, to develop. Um, we played around a bit with how best to pin, to, to do pinned insects. We've come up with this kind of little jig that you could put a specimen in and have the different markers embedded on it, still pretty small, and allows us to get, uh, to be able to reconstruct the specimens uh, pretty well. Um, we have a pipeline that's mostly automated, so we've built this software for operating the machine, deciding where we want to position the cameras. The idea is a technician can des design a particular path that would work for a range of specimens, and then she just has to put a specimen in there, press a button, and the imaging happens. But we don't want to have to then download this gigantic data set off the cameras. And so the idea is you, you just spend all day imaging, 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 
And then overnight, we do this bulk image transfer off the cameras. If there's three cameras, six cameras, it doesn't matter. All the images come off. And then once the images come off, we run it through a, a pipeline of various scripts that do various things. We actually associate the pose metadata, the positions of where all the cameras were with all the images. Um, we create these overview sheets so that we can see what the imaging has done and we get a very quick assessment of how well the imaging was done. Um, then we actually configure these manifest files that we've created so that we can automatically pipeline all the photogrammetry. So we actually don't do photogrammetry per se, where you're sitting there and, and doing it manually in any software. We just, we just run a script and let it go through. And then the next day we can look at those results and say, hey, did this 3D come out well? If it didn't, maybe we want to tweak some options or, or whatnot. Um, and then we get the output results. We also take some of these data for the lightning bug project, and then we feed it to our colleagues at Argonne National Labs, where they're developing the algorithms to extract out label data and produce these virtual labels, and then eventually structure data out of it. So this is the kind of pose metadata that we get out of it. You know, for every session and camera, we have the coordinates that come out of it. Um, but being able to, to associate this information with these cameras, like I said, we're just doing this imaging where we're plopping, you know, things and, and everything's getting stacked up on a big SD card. And, and so we have to have a, a lot of trickery for being able to, to then, after it's all downloaded, and, and be able to merge it all back together. And so we, we rely on a lot of the EXIF data and being able to do time, the timestamps at which the, cam, the images were taken. The, the software records every single time an image is taken and how long it takes for that image to be saved. And so we know a start time and an end time for every image. One thing we've learned, if anyone wants to do a similar thing, is that camera clocks are very inaccurate. They tend to lose time. And so we do have to calibrate the, the cameras every couple of days to make sure that they are in sync with our computers. Otherwise, they will be off by a couple of seconds. And a couple of seconds when you're doing high rapid imaging makes a big deal. Um, these are the, the composites that we'll generate so we can quickly overview and put the coordinates and which camera did the imaging. Um, and that just gives us a quick view as to what was done. Um, this is the manifest that we would then feed. We do most of our 3D reconstructions using a software called Reality Capture. I think there'll probably be talks later today that focus on that piece of software. Um, so we can specify all the various settings that we want, the targets we want to hit. And this is a manual creation. We haven't automated this part yet. And so the technician will sit there, edit this file, dump it into a folder. Once it's in that folder, another piece of software is just sitting there monitoring this folder. It identifies there's a new file in there, and then it just feeds it right into the photogrammetry pipeline. And we also have the ability to do focus stacking, which I'm seeing here, right here, this little line, or we can run it through Helicon Focus. If we use Irene Stacker, which sometimes we do, we'll do that manually. Oops. Um, here's an example of focus stacking. We don't really try to do focus stacking because it, it changes our scalability significantly. A focus stack data set could take us five hours to produce. So we try not to do that. This is just a test of the kind of quality we could get. So if we're doing like a Z stack, this would be very similar to how like a, a stack shot works, right? It's a camera moving along, along the lead screw. So we can get really good quality, but we also wanted to be able to test that we could run we stack using all three axes of the machines, which have different mechanics involved in making sure we could still get good, good data out of it. So here's kind of how we would do label extraction. We would have a data set, and obviously that's not, there aren't enough poses in that data set for doing, um, for doing 3D reconstruction, although maybe you could have on a very coarse level, but the idea is just to have enough images so that we can see from various fragmentary viewpoints all the different uh, the information on the particular label, and that's used for reconstructing. Right now, we're actually overshooting, taking much more data than we need so that we can work on developing the algorithms and, and have what we need. Um, here, so we can also do things where we take a number of specimens and just line them all up and then build a path that's kind of designed to encompass all of that. And then we can do 3D reconstruction of multiple sections at one time and then just segment it out. Whole drawer imaging, this isn't something we've really done a whole lot of. It's something we want to explore a little bit further um, and seeing what kinds of data we can get out of it. Here's a, a drawer that we, we did scan. Um, it was mainly just as a proof of concept saying, hey, we can do it. But um, it's, it's something I think we still need a lot of work. The drawers, the size of the cartons and all that really become problematic. 
Um, and then if you want to do more traditional type turntable type scanning, we have little widgets in the, in the software so that you can take the same software and take the same hardware and kind of just plug it up a little bit differently and use a couple of different components so that you could operate a turntable or you could operate the camera in kind of like a 360 degree panning mode if you wanted to do something like that. Um, the hardware, like I said, here is like a two chamber setup, which is what we have set up at the MCZ at Harvard right now. This is what we have set up here at, at the Peabody, and these are with the electronics and the little uh, camera cradle, if you like. And it's all open source hardware, so if anybody wanted to replicate this or contribute to it, you could just go to GitHub, download all the designs, and, and, and start rocking and rolling. Um, the software is also on GitHub. Um, you can see here is one of the more complicated paths we've created. It uses three cameras going around doing this kind of elongated ellipse around an object. Um, and like I said, there's lots of different tools for automatically creating these paths. Um, you know, this one is the one, this one that you see on the bottom left corner is probably the most efficient one that we've been using lately because it makes it easier. We can just take the approximate measurements of, this, of the specimen, the length, the width, the height, punch that into a little calculator and then come up with this little path that will, will make sure that the, the camera is always a certain distance from where our plane of focus is. And that allows us to not have to rely on autofocus and things like that. And for insects, autofocus tends to become very problematic. So our next steps, um, you know, as far as what we're working on, or these aren't necessarily things that we're specifically working on, but things that we would like to tackle at some point in the near future, or if there's someone who would like to collaborate and take on some of these tasks, we'd certainly be open up to it. One would be adaptive lighting. Lighting is still one of the challenges we have. We have all these cameras moving around and you want to avoid hot spots. And, and so having ways to have the lights be as smart as all the other elements of the device and say, hey, well, this light should dim out or turn off or do whatever. And so that kind of stuff we want to uh, explore at some point. Um, preliminary object detection using techniques like B-SLAM or something to say, oh, there's an object in the thing here, approximate dimensions, we'll just automatically create a path around that and then, then do the high resolution imaging. Um, integration of structured light, that's something we've been wanting to do for a long time, it's just it's been on the back burner and hasn't had, had a real priority. Using the data from the pose metadata to create camera priors that we can use to assist photogrammetry in the alignment. Um, other things where we do the masking in AI as opposed to relying on our current process for masking is to actually reconstruct a 3D model and then spit out masks from that 3D model and then redo the 3D model. But there might be other alternatives. Some of the early tests we've done with using like segment anything have been phenomenal. And so I think this is really a, a good opportunity to, to tackle uh, some of the masking things. And then ultimately, you know, increasing our documentation and community engagement. It's very easy for me to say this is open source, it's on GitHub, but without that documentation, it's not going to get a whole lot of use outside of that. And so that's something we're really interested in doing is improving the, the ability to use this and have other people um, either develop it or use parts of it to do whatever they need. Um, and with that, I will add, I hope I finished on time. We're ahead of schedule. Am I? Yeah. Oh, thank you. I was a little worried I had too many slides. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nicole, you should be able to share. To oh, okay. Oh, maybe she can share over it. Okay. 